हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वी आर हियर इन द पॉलिटिकल साइंस ऑफ स्टैंडर्ड नाइन महाराष्ट्र बोर्ड एंड वी आर लर्निंग अबाउट लेसन नंबर सिक्स इंटरनेशनल प्रॉब्लम्स पार्ट टू इन दिस पार्ट वी विल लर्न अबाउट वी विल लर्न फ्रॉम ह्यूमन राइट्स एंड इंडिया इन द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ह्यूमन राइट्स हैव बिन गिवन द प्लेस ऑफ फंडामेंटल राइट्स द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन गिव्स द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ वीकर सेक्शंस लाइक वुमेन एंड माइनॉरिटीज टू द गवर्नमेंट अलॉन्ग साइड दैट ऑफ फंडामेंटल राइट्स इन नाइनटीन नाइन्टी थ्री द ह्यूमन राइट्स प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट वॉज पास नाउ वॉट इज द रिलेशन ऑफ ह्यूमन राइट्स एंड इंडिया इन द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इट इज रिटन दैट ह्यूमन राइट्स हैव बीन गिवन द प्लेस ऑफ फंडामेंटल राइट्स ना वॉट आर फंडामेंटल राइट्स फंडामेंटल राइट्स आर नथिंग बट आवर बेसिक राइट्स विच वी नीड जस्ट एज एट द बेस लाइक एजुकेशन फूड शेल्टर ऑल दीज आर आवर फंडामेंटल राइट्स ऑल्सो एम्प्लॉयमेंट देन Uh, all similar uh, rights are called fundamental rights and they are included in the indian constitution this is a nice thing that uh, the indian constitution is quite aware of the uh, human rights and it protects these human rights by labeling them under your fundamental rights then the constitution also gives the responsibility of protection uh, of the weaker sections women and other uh, and minorities uh, to the government that is the uh, it is not like only the other uh, people of the greater or upper castes will uh, develop even other people like uh, weaker sections women minorities they should also get a chance of development and the constitution is uh, giving this ch- this chance and this opportunities to them through the government okay so that is also another positive approach by the indian constitution for the human rights of all the people all inclusive human rights then in 1993 the human rights protection act was passed this we have learned to even in the uh, history lesson number 6 that is empowerment of women and weaker sections uh, and uh, from that we learned that in 1993 the human rights protection act was passed and this act used to protect the, uh, the human rights it used to work or and lay down reg- uh, rules and regulations for how the uh, human rights are protected okay then uh let's do it a few issues have been given here classify them into two groups national and international issues now we have already learned that which are the national issues and which are the international issues now what are the national issues just to recall yourself correct national issues are the issues which are faced by only one specific nation or one particular nation like uh, the riot of uh, riot in mumbai in the year 2005 and similar other things are inter- are national issues for india okay now the f- f- currently the former agitation which is going on in india is the national issue for india because it is going only in india and not outside of india then comes the international issues international issues we have learned in part 1 that international issues are those issues which are faced not by one but many that is almost all the world like terrorism racism and uh, social and eco- uh, economic inequalities etc now based on this these uh, definitions which i told just now let us see uh, whether the following issues are national or international issues now first is empowerment of weaker sections this is a, an international issue because there are weaker sections almost in every country of the world and these weaker sections need some or the other help uh, from the government may it be in the form of employment uh, then housing then uh, food and shelter reservation in government in the government jobs etc then comes lack of public hygiene this also is an uh, is uh, a national problem because not all nations have the lack of public hygiene some nations are good in public hygiene okay but some nations are not that good that is why it is a national issue then comes terrorism as i said earlier only terrorism is a Uh, is an international issue okay many nations or that is almost all nations of the world face the issue of terrorism then traffic jam 
it is also an actually an international issue but it is not that much important as terrorism and racism so therefore let us call it as national issue privatization of economy this is an uh, international issue because most of the economies of the world are privatized except the uh, socialist type of economy then comes the uh, then comes the sec- se- se- secessionism now what is secessionism so what is secessionism secessionism is nothing but the removal of a particular group from a particular region outside that uh, country or outside that area for example if i give you an example uh, the ireland uh, was was got separated from england that is uh, it became different the people of uh, that is irish people people of ireland got separated from england that is they were literally thrown, thrown out of in england in the olden days and hence they formed a different uh, state called ireland the, it is similar to the partition of india and uh, pakistan okay so that is called secessionism it is an international issue not only a single nation faces secessionism then violation of human rights this also is an international issue many countries are there in the world which have which uh, face violation of human rights like mostly the middle east countries are the f- four frontier came on the forefront in violation of human rights uh, many of the countries of the world which do not have democracy uh, see democracy is e- equal to human rights that is an equation that works as an equation always that uh, that is democracy is always equal to human rights and if democracy is not there human rights are 100% violated so that is also an international issue then thinning of the ozone layer it is not like only the ozone layer is thinned after uh, above india uh, only above america it's not like that the ozone layer is thinned on many parts of the world and that is an international problem suppose there is a hole big hole in the ozone layer it will not only affect antarctica but it will it will affect all of the world okay so that is what is we call as global warming that is an international issue then poverty and illiteracy yes both of them are international issues many nations of the world face poverty and illiteracy both some nations are poorer than others while some nations have illiteracy in more amount than others then comes uh, uh, where we were left we were left at human rights protection act uh, as we know in 1993 the human rights protection act was passed and as per this law the national human rights commission and the state human rights commission was were established the human rights commission is responsible for taking cognizance of the complaints regarding violation of human rights and take appropriate action regarding such violation see uh, as i said earlier this human rights protection act was uh, passed in the uh, passed in the parliament in 1993 to in order to protect the human rights of the indian citizens and uh, with respect to this law the national human rights commission and state human rights commissions were established at the national level and state level respectively after that the human rights commission is re- responsible for taking cognizance that is taking the responsibility of uh complaints regarding violation of re- uh, human rights that is if at all in any place of india in any indian territory the human rights are violated then the human rights commission is responsible for the same and they are used to the, they are expected to stop this violation of human rights at that particular area and take appropriate action regarding such violation then comes can you tell this is a very interesting column in our uh, history textbook for standard 9 can you tell who is the chairman of the national human rights commission of india currently take a minute to think by yourself correct the the current uh, chairman of the national human rights commission is h l dattu and uh he was the uh, the earlier one was changed and hl dattu became the chairman of the national human rights commission of india in in the year 2016 so that was a part of extra information then going further 
we have the secure environment uh, in the present times the concept of human rights has become broader and it is increasingly being accepted as a secure environment uh, is an important that a secure environment is an important human right at the international level the awareness and need of saving saving the environment was expressed in the year 1970 the experts studying uh, the environment believed that due to industrialization on a large scale uh, and the increase and in the and the increasing need of energy has endangered the environment these activists celebrated the first earth day in 19, uh, on 27 day 22nd april 1970 chemical fertilizers and pesticides used in agriculture sound pollution due to vehicles radiation from nuclear reactors oil leakages or leakages of chemical gases make the environment unsafe and create various problems now let's see what is a secure environment secure environment is nothing but the environment which is safe for all living organisms not only man i said i repeat not only man but all other living organisms like trees and animals and birds uh, for them it is a sustainable environment which is called as secure environment and in the present times we have uh, face we have been facing many different environmental issues like pollution there are many different kinds of pollution there is sound pollution there is water pollution there is air pollution and uh, some other types are also there which are small in number then we come to know about global warming then there is climate change as a result of global warming then there is uh, the ill effects of chemical fertilizers and pesticides then we have the fumes of uh, industries all these things finally and ultimately are going to destroy the environment and finally and ultimately are going to affect the environment badly so we have uh, we should st- stop all these things and instead we should find some preventive measures to for how to save the environment that is nothing uh, after doing that we will get nothing but the secure environment secure for all living organisms then as a result of this awareness the question of environmental safety began to be discussed at the international level after the wave of globalization that started in 1990 the interdependence among nations increased and therefore a need for nations to cooperate with each other emerged the threat by uh, the threat to the environment caused by pollution or by leakage of oil or gas does not remain restricted to one nation also its effects are long term it becomes necessary for, to na- for nations to act again uh, to act with each other's consent and cooperation in order to deal with these effects now once the all the nations of the world became aware about the ill effects of environmental issues the serious uh, hazardous effects of them on the uh, living of on the living and on the work of human beings uh, which b- was smoother before but after, due to these environmental issues it became uh, difficult for all the other organisms along with human beings so they started taking conferences and they started taking discussions they started conducting discussions and delegate and deliberations uh, delegations about uh, how to stop these uh, or how to uh, get rid of these environmental issues okay uh, in 1990 there uh, we saw uh, all of us saw globalization that and uh, uh, because of this globalization the interdependence between the nations increased that is it became more stronger all nations began to uh, interdependent uh, began to be interdependent on other nations more than they were before okay and the threat to environment caused by pollution leakage of oil gas etc were does not remain restricted to one nation see suppose uh, in uh, in the indian ocean the oil is has been leaked from a from an oil ship oil carrying ship so that doesn't mean that it will affect only india it will also affect the neighbors which will affect their neighbors like this oil will affect india's neighbor sri lanka which will affect sri lanka's neighbor madagascar which will affect other further madagascar's neighbor this will going to go in a chain in a sequence and this sequence finally will lead to the whole world suffering from the environmental effects uh, which come from the leakage of particular oil uh, or the other 
सीरियस एनवायरमेंटल इशू एंड देर फॉर मोर ओवर इट्स इफेक्ट्स आर लॉन्ग टर्म दे आर नॉट लाइक टुडे द ऑयल गेट वॉट स्पिल्ड टुमोरो इट विल गेट कैरीड अवे इन द ओशन इट्स नॉट लाइक दैट इट्स लॉन्ग इट्स इफेक्ट्स आर लॉन्ग टर्म ड्यूरेबल दैट इज लॉन्ग लास्टिंग एंड हेंस इट बिकम्स नेसेसरी फॉर द नेशन टू एक्ट अगेंस्ट दीज एनवायरमेंटल इशूज टू कम टूगेदर एंड टेक ईच अदर्स कंसेंट एंड कोऑपरेशन इन ऑर्डर टू डील दीज इफेक्ट्स then the visible effects uh, of the decline of environment are extinction of species of plants and animals decrease in the fertility of soil water shortage fluc- uh, fluctuation in the pro- proportion of rainfall global warming drying up of rivers and lakes pollution of rivers and seas incidence of newer diseases acid rain uh, thinning of the ozone layer etc even if some of the uh, effects on are restricted to particular nations these problems reach global proportions uh global proportions and due to their long term effects while some pro- while some problems are inherently by a uh, are, iran- are inherently of a global nature now see the visual effects of decline of environment that is visual effects of uh, these environmental issues are seen by extinction of various plants and animals see large scale and plants have been uh, extinct some are uh, large scale animals have been extinct some uh, animals and plants are on the verge of extinction that is they are threatened they are critically endangered some are endangered okay so it happens and see the himalayan snow leopard 